In today's video, we're going to be breaking down Bjergsen's insane performance in the Chinese Super Server. Currently ranked 110 on this server, which is very competitive. He has about 900 LP, and he has been on a tear in the mid lane, pulling really high win rates on champions like the Syndra, um, like the Lucian, the Galio, and the Silas. Today's review is going to be the Silas review. I think the champion is super strong at the moment. It's a great counter pick to champions with very good uh, abilities uh, for their ultimates, like the think of things like it's going to counter Twisted Fate, things like the Malphite, things like Pike. Uh, Silas does exceptionally well into these type of picks. So today. We'll be breaking down the mid lane matchup of Silas versus Galio. It's a bit of a banger. I hope you enjoy it. Before we hit the rift, guys, if you enjoy my type of content, please think about subscribing. We're almost at 200k, bro. Literally so close. So I'd appreciate that a lot. Um, without further ado, let's jump straight onto the rift. Hitting the rift now and taking a look at the room page, guys. It's that fleet footwork setup. I expect the GLP. I expect the Q Max for this Silas in the mid lane. Secondaries, you got the biscuit delivery. Gonna help you sustain a lot, and you have the the CDR, the Cosmic Insight. Interestingly, he has a Dorian's two potions. This is very aggressive. A lot of Silas's like the corrupting potion, but look, Bjergsen has opted for a more aggressive setup into this Lissandra mid lane pick. And these Chinese Lissandras are very dangerous. Okay, she has Ignite and she has Electrocute. No Lissandra on the super server goes that aftershock, that slow tempo Lissandra with TP. They are in your face. They're permanently fighting, looking to engage. And let's see how he tries to situ situate the early laning phase. You can see, trying to avoid any early poke. You probably won't see him aggress until level three, um, where he can probably take a positive trade. He can maybe get uh, uh, the E into the Q, into a W for the heal, and it's going to be a positive trade for him with the fleet. But obviously, when you get that fleet footwork, guys, it's essentially saying, you know, you're trying to sustain the early game, hit one item, and then start to take over because into something like this Lissandra, okay, you're going to get harassed early on and there's not much kill pressure. If you, you like, the only way you're really going to get kills early, especially with this teleport and the fleet, is if your jungle goes for a level 2 or level 3 gank. That's the only really way there is kill pressure unless the enemy makes a massive, massive uh, miss, you know, bad judgment on our, our trade. You can see dropping a couple of farm in the early game here, already threw his potions. And it is not going too well. The E is going to be used second. Followed by the W. I assume it's going to be a Q Max. We haven't really seen many W Max Silas's at Worlds. Um, or in China at all on the solo, on the Super Server. But. Look, if he's getting a little bit far behind. Doesn't really feel the necessary need to go the Q Max. We could see a W, but I doubt it. First Blood over to the Renekton here. Thank you very much. Got the Lilia in the jungle. And Worlds kicked off last night. I don't know what you guys thought, but it was pretty interesting. The Oceanic team, my boys, the Oce team got up. Team Liquid also won over Mad Lions. Bit of an upset there. Um, I called Team Liquid to win. I thought they were a little bit underrated. And I thought Mad was a little bit overrated. They haven't been really performing that well as of late. But uh, tonight's games should be bangers as well. But of course, the actual group stage won't be starting for another couple of weeks. For another week at least. I think it's next Monday. Not the Monday coming, the Monday after. So, currently Saturday for me. And Bjergsen just taking a bit of harass. Look, he's down a couple of CS. He's going to teleport back into the mid lane here, I assume. Maybe he goes for the double Dorans. Let's just see what he goes for. Double Dorans. Huh? Yeah, there we go. Sometimes you get that rejuve bead. You go, oh shit, wrong item. But he gets the double Dorans and teleports back. Um, and now he's situated perfectly in the lane. Got a lot of health. Lissandra doesn't have teleport. So if she wants to force a base here, um, Bjergsen has the option to kind of try and cancel the base or pull a freeze. So he pulls the freeze. You see the wave here? He puts up. Hey, Lilia, what did you... Did you just cue that? She just ruined the wave. She wants to shove. But... You hate to see it, don't you? You hate to see it. He had a nice freeze set up. Lissandra has no mana. Had to base. Ooh. Oh, if that Q... If he... He should have saved the Q for when the E landed, right? That's a shame. The wave is still situated perfectly. Kindred715. Now, this is a Kindred player we see often when spectating. I think he likes to go that lethality. He likes to go like an edge of night on Kindred. Crazy. But... Bjergsen pulls the wave eventually for the freeze, gets boots, and he'll head back into the mid lane. 
Really nice wave control from him. Uh, his, his jungler kind of griefed him on that, but it is what it is. He doesn't tilt, stays composed. He'll come back to a stacked wave. Really nice wave management. I think Bjergsen, man, I think he might have a pretty good, pretty, um, he's, I think he's going to surprise a lot of people at Worlds this year. He's been playing very well in solo queue from the games I've been watching. It's weird to see his playstyle in um, China because a lot of these world's mids, they get baited in by this Fiesta style, okay? The Super Server, pure Fiesta over and over again. Um, but Bjergsen holds true to his own playstyle. He hasn't, he has the same playstyle here as he did when he was playing NA solo queue, which is surprising. Like, a lot of people try and shift it. Oh my god, he doesn't die there. And you saw how aggressive this Electrocute with Ignite... Uh, Lissandra can be, and she doesn't quite get the kill. He gets that level up. Beautiful save by him. And that's massive, because now with the fleet and the health potions, guys, he can sustain back full. And Lissandra, without that ignite and that uh, ultimate, is useless in the lane. Another lane pull? Jesus Christ. This is tremendous wave management. We can all learn from this. He's trying to pull these creeps a little bit to the side. I think it's going to bounce back, right? Doesn't really quite work. It's a little bit too close to the tower, so this will slow shove back into Lissandra. As Bjergsen's level 6, is he going to steal that Lissandra? And it is the Q-Max, of course, guys. Um, I did assume it was going to be the Q-Max, and you can see how much damage is coming out on that Q now with the poke into these mid-range mages. Oh, the e That was absolutely... Quicked. He steals the list ult, gets the E stun into the list R. Oh, that was nice, man. Oh, damn, Bjergsen with some mechanics on the. <laughs> damn, this goddamn. This Lilia, man. Bjerg can come through. Gets outplayed. Well played by Kindred. Four kills to the Kindred. Let's see what he buys. Probably has enough for Mercs, or he can start going up for the uh, the GLP. Gets the Revolver. This is a very aggressive buy. Um, it pretty much means he's going to look to try and skirmish now, try and poke out the Lissandra. There's 1v1 potential. We saw it. The damage is there now. And the Revolver Double Dorans compared to Lissandra's Revolver and just a Dark Seal. Um, he's in a much better spot itemization-wise. Almost. If you get that E just before Lissandra takes the second E, that she, she'll actually miss it and she'll be stuck. Uh, and she'll like a fish out of water. She won't be able to do anything and you should be able to eat her up. Two level advantage in the mid lane now. We're seeing why these wave management and the E lands. The Q doesn't quite get there. He's trying to move it in. And this level ex advantage is from all these wave pulls, okay guys? Like... The wave freezes he's been pulling, and he just completely... Lissandra's missing so many waves because of this. Now Bjerg absolutely dominating the lane. Love to see the pressure coming out from him. He has the lead, and he's putting it on her. And we can see why this uh, Q Max Salas is so good into these mid-range mages. Like if you can get that Q, that second Q, you instantly poke them out. It's a lot of um, it's a lot of poke damage, man, and people underestimate it, especially in lower elos, guys. Below diamond, and look at that. Like e e this is Chinese challenger, and Lissandra is just completely disrespecting him. And he's gonna pick up a solo, the second solo of the game for himself, and a tower plate. I'm a little bit worried though because the kindred and the Jin are getting a lot of gold handed to them. Gold is about even. 500 gold lead for Bjerg. Let me know what you guys think TSM are going to do in their groups. We have TSM. We have Fnatic, which is going to be very interesting. Um, I'm not sure who's going to get in from the wildcard group. Maybe LGD, I think, may go to their group. And then, of course, they have uh, Gen G, which is BDD, as Bjergsen comes down to the bot lane and picks himself up a kill. Steals that center ultimate. I think it's going to be a tight group. 
I think, honestly, Gen G will win the group. And then I think it's a coin flip from TSM, Fnatic, or, and the wildcard team, whether it be LGD um, or another group. Even though LGD dropped the game last night, interestingly. Peanut, I thought, was going to come in hot, but he didn't look too crash hot. Who has this two-level advantage? You need, and the Kindred's going to get that lethality build, scary. Um, you need to start pressing, pr like, you need to start putting this lead on the map now. You're dominating Lissandra, but it's not going to be enough. You need the shutdown onto the Kindred. As they pick up a kill onto the Lucian. Bjerg wrapping across, trying to save treats. Bjerg and treats have been doing a lot of duoing on the Chinese super server. Andrew coming in. Here comes... Yeah. And that's complete. That's just uh, overextension. Should have been respecting it, honestly. He drops there. And Renekton's going to be able to eat up some plates. The Renekton-Camille matchup. The Renekton dominates early, but the Camille, as the game starts going, probably three items the Camille can start to beat the Renekton, actually, and kind of take over the game. But considering she's 0-3 already, there's probably not much coming back from it. So if they wanted, they could drop into a 1-3-1 strategy at around about 15-20 minutes um, with Lucian, Tarek in the mid lane. It would be a pretty good strategy. But uh, you see the GLP has been picked up for Bjergs in here. Has the Q being maxed fully, level 9. And then he's going to max his W followed by E. How nice are these timers that you get on Wii game? You see these timers on the map, guys? This is what all the Chinese players get. Pretty nice. As Lissandra's probably trying to roam top here. He, Bjerg will shove the wave, then follow. Has a 20 CS lead. Yeah, Lissandra goes in. You can see on the top side of the map. Bjerg's in teleporting. There's a spectator bug, by the way, guys. As we teleport in, he steals the Lissol, picks up the Camille. The GLP slow. It should be easy. Or not, as the entire team is up here. He's going to run. Careful, 7-0 Kindred. He picks up his fourth kill of the game, but the entire team makes their way across. Scary. And second item for these Silas is, it's usually either a Leandris, if you're looking to skirmish and duel, or you're looking for an Hourglass if you want to try and um, get a little bit of extra like survivability and armor. Um, this game, look... Not really sure what's better, to be fair. Just depends on what type of strategy Bjerg wants. He'll probably end up being an Hourglass and a GLP. Just don't know which one he's going to buy first. As Treat's looking for a dive in the mid lane. Bjergsen absolutely griefs it, but they do get the kill. Ooh, Treat's his tower cult. Just saves him. And he does drop. Played it pretty bad. Kamal making his way in. Kindred ult comes out. 7-0 Kindred. we got to look for the shutdown. And we get it. Lucian eats a 1,000 gold bounty. Gold's dead even. Beautiful game. I think Bjergsen, a couple of over-aggressive mistakes, right? But he has the lead. He's trying to extend it, put the tempo onto the map, and he grabs the, the, the Merc treads now. Combining up with his rune page, guys, he has the tenacity. Um, look, Lissandra ult, not going to be CCing him for too long. I really wouldn't mind a 1-3-1. If Bjergsen drops bot here, I actually kind of like it. You can see the Lucian running mid. Like Bjerg's going to try and eat mid lane wave and then go bot and eat the bot lane wave as well. Ah, see, you see that? He gives it to the Lucian. Good guy. Because he should be bot. I think he knows it. He just wasn't really sure what was happening with the macro. He works it out. And they're going to move down. For the Lissandra here, you're going to hope she doesn't have any backup. Yep, beautiful. Free kill. But the Kindred answers with the kill of herself onto the Lucian. And as always, on the Chinese Super Server, guys, it's messy. Very messy games.
But Bjergsen will just get stronger and stronger here. I don't know how, like, it's going to be very hard for them to match him, especially with considering how good of ults he has to steal. He has Lissandra, he has Kindred ult, he has Jin center ult. Like, there's a lot of really nice ultimates for him to set up with. Even the Camille ult could work. As uh, the second dragon going to be going over. What soul is it? Infernal? Beautiful. As Bjergen treats. The two-man TSM duo. I've been impressed with treats, man. He's been playing very well. Putting up really nice performances on the super server. And uh, I've got a couple of reviews coming. There's been a couple of um, really standout players on the super server. Just some one tricks. Um, Katarina, Kiana, you know, the 2000 LP rank one Kiana playing the super server. I'll get, try and get some reviews for you guys because they're really interesting players. And it's really hard to search them up and get VODs because they play on the super server, which is so hard to get footage of, you know. Um, so, them to come on the YouTubes. Looks like a bit of an NA ARAM. Kindred grabs that edge of night. Beautiful flash forward by the Ginny Jin. I think the Herald's gonna make it. They can see the Herald and wait for the uh, dragon. Yeah, looking for a base now. Continues to get. Oh, he's waiting it out. They know. Hey, no vision. What the hell? Mm-hmm. Renekton. Two items to Camille's components of a Triforce. Yikes. You'd hope Renekton starts to win out. And he's going to go for the Hourglass second. He wants to be a little bit more defensive. He wants to get that, uh, that armor. He wants to get an engage off, get the Hourglass, and hopefully his WCD is back up so he can get a double heal off. He has Teleport, but he's matching the Renekton lane. I guess because there's not much to do, if you look at the topside wave, it would take him so long to run up to the topside wave, right? And he's in a dangerous position because not much vision. But I guess he just hovers on the Renekton hoping to counter gank something. Seems like a decent strategy because if they can kill the Camille here, then an easy tower drop. They try and play the vision game. And also guys, dope review coming soon. Dopa has announced this will be his last season. As he's about to go and do his mandatory military service for around about two years. Yeah, so if my eyes have been a little bit red, I've been crying. Feels bad, man. But he's currently grinding for rank one, so I've got some dope reviews in the vault, saved, ready to go. He's currently ranked 20 on the Korean server at the moment, so he's closing in, taking his time. The old man looking for one more historic rank one climb before the uh, he hangs up that keyboard and mouse and retires. They're 30 to Drake. They're looking to get a skirmish. Camille ult comes through. Center. Beautiful center stun. Not much you can do about that one, can you? God's dead even, man. I, like, the, the game is going to be very close. Obviously, huge lead on the Kindred, but Renekton and Silas are pretty far ahead. The Jin's gone for the Stormraiser. Rapid fire build. I don't mind this build. Very fast. I know, uh, I think Reckless likes the IE rapid fire into Stormraiser. Um, most of the Korean and the Chinese players like the Stormraiser rush. Want that slow, that utility, rather than the damage. Getting into the next dragon coming up in 30 seconds, lads. You can see Björg hovering down for the Camille. You can see she's overextended. He has the Camille ult. Let's see how the skirmish goes. The E misses. Q just wide. GLP just wide. 
Finally, we connect some skill shots. Should be the Camille. Comes through. This skirmish, I don't see if he... I don't think he loses this at all. It's going to be so easy. Beautiful. Camille, overextension. And they're hovering on the Nash Rush. Yerkson opting for the teleport. Look at the minimap. It's bugged, but he is teleporting in. Trying to stop this Baron Nash Shaw coming through at 20 minutes. And he successfully stops it with the TP. The Jin ult. Is that Renekton coming in deep as well? They should disengage and just grab that Drake. Try and set themselves up for an Ocean Soul win condition. Should be free. But once again, the enemy team's hovering on the Nash. Look at the teleport coming through, probably from the Cam definitely from the Camille. Why are they just con continuously starting this Nash rush? They're crazy. As Lilia gets bopped by the Camille. Jörg trying to hover. The Renekton in a bit of a weird spot. Can he dash over? He does. Camille comes in. Caracol just gets in there. And we're going to see them go for a skirmish. Oh, that's a beautiful engage by Lissandra. <laughs> Camille just grief. It ends up being a two for two. A two for three, actually. Jerkson got a do Oh, that's a beautiful dodge out onto the Jin W. And gold lead 1,000 in favor of blue side. This game's getting real spicy. Bjergsen next item, probably going to be a Leandris. I don't see what else it could be. Picks up that blasting wand. Um, should be Leandris. And then usually after you've got your three core on this Silas, you've got the uh, GLP, Hourglass, Leandris. You can either go for a Death Cap or a Void Staff, okay? Um, enemy team comp doesn't have much MR at the moment. Though Death Cap looks better for the mid-game spike unless... They just start itemize, itemizing a lot of MR in the next couple of minutes. Um, it should be a Leandris into Death Cap build for Björk. Which is super, super high burst and high damage. As you can see, he has a Lissandra ult stolen, ready to go for a pick. Hunting. Nobody's overextending here, it seems. Oh, close. GLP. And you can see what you're like. You can see the intentions of how you play this GLP Silas. Once you have these two items, guys, it like... Oh, as he comes in, Lissandra ult onto the Jin, Into the Hourglass. Do they... Does anybody be able to get the Jin? Jin's in the back line. Can't quite get him, but you can see... He, he hard engages, right? He's in the middle of the team comp with Lissandra ult. He gets his rotation off, and then he Hourglasses. Then your team is meant to come in, surround you, and then hopefully your WCD is up so you can heal yourself back up to full, or like at least like half health. That W max at level 13 is pretty big. And they kill the jungle, kill the mid lane, and this will mean a free Baron. And now, sure, Barak still has ult, pops it. This Lucian. He's hit his uh, spike in the mid game. Look at that. Three items. Got his crits, got his mirror mana. Mana immune. And we're off to the bloody races, mate. As we are 2k gold lead now. Has been swung into red side's favor. And this Lilia going to be working towards a dead man's plate. It's weird these Lilia builds. Oh my god. Why are they not respecting the Lucian as Björg looking to come in now? He's big, man. I think they can keep going forward. Just run it through. Look at the... The coordination from Björg and Treats. So the Tarek puts the stun onto the Silas. Silas jumps forward, and it's pretty much a guaranteed stun. Don't think you win this, Camille. Oh, that Q just... Björg sends a psychopath. He's going in. And he picks up a double for himself. Jesus. 11 kills on a Björgsen now. And they should be able to drop this in here. Jin's coming out of base. Björk's a little bit confident here. He dashes forward, gets the stun like I was saying. And almost gets that Jin. Kills the Jin ult. They should get in here and bail. And then you get that dragon spawning in one minute. Should be a reset into Drake. Pretty easy macro call. 
Hey. Okay. Yokeson picking up some extra farm. <laughs> he just cleared that whole wave. Look at that. He cleared the whole wave with the gin farm. To try and get that. And he gets that Leandries now. Beautiful. Has that three item power spike for this next fight. And what do you guys think about um, the mid lane pool of this? So we've got, so in Bjergsen's pool, we have Nemesis, BDD, and probably Shige. Thorin made a tweet, said it's, it's the group of, the, of, underrated, of, of overrated mid laners. He said, this group is full of overrated mid laners. Nemesis, Bjerg, and BDD, all overrated, he said. I don't know if they're overrated. Nemes everyone's giving Nemesis a hard time recently. He had a pretty bad year. But he's had, he's had glimpses of really nice gameplay. And look, I hope Nemesis turns it around. I think he's a good player. He's just kind of um, been a bit lackluster as of late. But hopefully this boot camp and these scrimmages have been going well for him. And he turns it and makes this mid lane pool of Björg, BDDM, and, and himself really competitive. Definitely not the strongest mid lane pool, but it'll be an interesting one. For me, the top three mid laners in the world at the moment is Knight, Chovy, and Showmaker. I don't think anyone could disagree with that top three. Um, and then afterwards, you really it's 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 totally like you know, you've got names such as Caps coming up, you got BDD coming up, you have Yigal, of course, coming up as well. Um, it's a hard list after that. But is Bjergsen in the top five? I don't think so. I would not put Bjerg in my top five. Cap's definitely in my top five, I think. But not my top three. As this fight is not looking too good. You see the Camille coming in. We still have Lissandra ult. Engages back. Gonna have to use the Lissandra ult as he drops pretty low here. And the Jin, Boom. He has his items, and they're going to try and hunt him down here. Treats flashes forward. Damn, they're aggressive. Bjergsen, his Q picks up the Lissandra. These TSM boys, man. Oh, go for the Jin. Oh, he just misses. He has that Jin ult. One. Oh, just wide. Just wide. Oh, he flashes forward with the W to pick up the kill. I'm going to test these players for bloody uh, steroids because they're popping off. I think they're going to drop here. Treats. Who are they going to go for? They're going to go for the treats. Not going to go for the 1,000 bounty for Björk. He's going to get out. And I'm going to have Infernal Soul in about two minutes. As Bjork has a center ult. And they're hovering. They're on vision though. Let's see how this fight plays out. Lucian dashes in. Instantly Kindred gets an ult. Bjork get, wants to get inside of there. He gets inside. Double kill over to the Lucian. Tenth kill of the game for himself. And Bjork would be sitting on a lot of gold here. Let's see what he buys. I don't think Void Staff is good. Because they only have the Hex Shrinker from the Jin. The rest doesn't. Picks himself up a double needlessly large rod for the death cap. And uh, he's teleporting back in and looking for these inhibs. They should be able to close the game out. If they play it correctly, just auto the tower. Jörg looking to go in. Has his hourglass available. Uh, pops it. Okay. Is this a throw? Hmm. It seems that way. 11 kills on the Jin. He's getting his crit items now, and I'm a little bit nervous. Jin range on these, like, he outranges every single member on Bjergsen's team. And that range with the center, I can't see how many center stacks she has, but I bet it's a lot at 30 minutes in. And 
They should lose the Baron Nasha, right? Kindred should come in and clean that up easily. It's going to come down to this next Infernal... The Infernal Soul fight. Soul point. In 45 seconds. Bjergsen not going to have his death cap available for the fight, so... We'll flash, so they're going to have to try and play this perfectly. Camille also, I know she has 11 deaths, but you know... Once she gets her next item, she's going to become a bit of a menace. And the Kindred build is... Warrior, Edge of Night, Essence Reaver, IE, into probably a Rapid Fire or a PD. It looks like a attack speed item. Or a Storm Razor? But I doubt it. But who knows? Interesting uh, Kindred build, to say the least. I've never seen anyone else build this. Let me know if I'm wrong. Maybe some NA streamer or someone does it. I don't know. I just don't see it in high elo kindreds, so. As Infernal comes across, it's going to be a bit of a contest. Lilia picks it up. Center ult doesn't grab it. And that is Sol. Infernal Sol over. That's huge. And they're going to try and just run this through. Let's see what Bjergsen can get done. He has the Lissandra ult ready to go. The GLP, Lissandra just dodges out. A little bit overextended here. There goes the Lucian. Lucian flashes in. Gets insta-pop, but luckily has his Guardian's Angel. Gets inside of the Kindred ult. And Lucian just going pure man mode. What can Björg get done? Grab this Jin. He has Hourglass. He's going to... Doesn't opt to use the Hourglass. Interesting strategy, but the Nexus looking pretty low, and that's going to be a GG. Hopefully, you've learned something and enjoyed the VOD. Been a crazy game from Björgsen, boys. And until next time, I catch you later. Peace.